today on Kingdom News, Lawrence and Dara Simi are your dedicate new baby. Full name reveal. Your birth is a miracle. Dara Simi Oyo gushes over son on birthday. Deborah Paul and Enche wants those saying husband will leave her because of her dressing. Moromolu Watiketike wants praise leaders on singing Teshumole by Naira Mali. Hello there, God's own people. Welcome to God's own TV. It is no longer news that gospel ministers, Lawrence Oyo and Darasimi Oyo, welcomed their second baby, a baby boy. Lawrence and Darasimi last month took to the social media to announce the arrival of their second child. According to Lawrence Oyo, the baby was born on the 12th of June, which happened to be the Democracy Day. Meanwhile, Baby John was dedicated today at the Davidic Generation Church, Ibado, an assembly pastored by Lawrence Oyo himself. According to the photos shared by the church, Reverend Patient Oyo was there to bless and dedicate the baby. The full name of the baby is John Lawson Oyo. See more pictures. Gospel drama actress and minister Dara Simi Gumba Oyo has taken to our official social media page to celebrate her first son, Elijah Mike, as he celebrates his second birthday. Sharing a picture of Elijah Mike, Dara Simi Gumba Oyo noted that his first son's birth was a miracle and also a testimony. She added that she's blessed to be called his mom and she is also favored to be the tool God is using to train him in the ways of the Lord. She further prayed for him and reinstate our love for our son. In a word, she said, This is the day that the Lord has made. Happy birthday, my dear sweet Elijah Mai. The Lord has blessed you with himself. Your birth is nothing short of a miracle and a testimony. It is truly a blessing to mother you and an honor to introduce you to the world through the lens of the Lord. Describing Elijah Mike as a peaceful son, she went on to pour prayers on him. She said, My peaceful, thoughtful, joyful, and blessed boy, the joy of the Lord resides with you now and forevermore. We love you. In another development, Pastor Lawrence Oya also took to his social media pages to celebrate his son. Sharing some new photos of the celebrant, he thanked God for giving him the privilege to father Elijah Mike. He also prayed that he increases in strength and also to finish strong. In his own words, he said, My boy, we cannot thank God enough for the privilege of raising you. May your strength ever increase. You will eat the mark and finish your assignment. We love you, dear prophet Elijah. We at God's on TV are also celebrating Elijah Mike. We pray that may the plans and purpose of God for his life be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Debbie. If there's one thing I have, it's the audacity. How do I have audacity? Hello there, godly people. Welcome to God's Own TV. Okay, so everybody know Deborah Paul and Enche. We know the way she dress. We know that her style is a little bit unconventional. And sometimes she goes out of her way to 
do whatever she wants like, like a lot of styles a lot of dresses or a lot of combinations that people will be shy or afraid to rock deborah will flaunt it and she will be so proud of it and even share them on the social media and unknown to a lot of people I don't know, maybe you have been going through a comment section, but for someone like me, I was so surprised that people were actually calling her mentally unstable. That some people were telling her that she's going to die, that a, a husband will leave her. Now, and that is so shocking. You know, sometimes early this year, was it this year or last year when she locked a comment section, I was wondering why. Of course, I knew that a lot of people were following her and they were commenting saying a lot of things that maybe she didn't like but i actually didn't imagine or believe that it was this bad like people coming to her comment section to tell her that she will die that she's crazy she needs evaluation she needs help that her husband will leave her because of her dressing hello her husband saw her dressing this way before he proposed and before they got married so why will anybody imagine or even think that her husband is going to leave her because of the way she chose to dress let me play the video for you this is directed at anyone who called me crazy in my last post look you may not get this right it doesn't make sense to you but it gives you no right to tell me that I'm mentally ill, or I deserve to die, or my husband's gonna leave me. That's horrible stuff. God loves me like this, right? I love me like this, more importantly. And I have married a man who God gave me that loves me just like this. So if you don't like it, off my page. Okay, welcome back. So what do you think about this? To be sincere, I am so shocked, I am so surprised because what will make people, any normal human, to wish death or madness on another person because you don't understand what they are doing? Now, the thing is, do you know that a lot of ways that we dress today, they were considered strange some years ago? Like, look at Jesus' time. There was nothing like trousers, there was nothing like um, tops or shirts. But somehow, some people invented something. Maybe they were called crazy or mad then. And after a while, everybody started adopting it and it's talk. And even apart from that, this thing called style is, um, is subjective. What you think is acceptable may be unacceptable. I'm very sure that a lot of Nigerians, when they go to other countries, there will be culture shock. Like they will be so surprised and shocked about how people dress or how people care less about dressing if you see style or fashion as an art you won't have problem with the way deborah paul and Encha is dressing you won't even see it as a big deal because at the end of the day art is ex is about expressing yourself it's about saying things through what you are showing forth so sometimes you show yourself forth in a way that is conventional that everybody understands and sometimes it is in a way that people don't understand. Some of the most expensive paintings in the world today do not make sense because that is what art is. And apart from that, if you're not happy with the way she's dressing or you're not satisfied or you think that she, you disapprove and you can't understand and you just don't like it, then maybe block her. Block her, unfollow, don't see her post, don't read any news stories about her. I think that is actually better than to start spinning a thread, to start saying nasty comment, to start getting bitter over something that you don't have any control about. Okay, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. But for me, there is something called freedom of expression. So if you don't like the expression, then ignore it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do have a lovely day ahead. Bye. Kote Shumone is not a praise song. Morumoluwa Teke Teke cautions praise leaders. 
fast rising gospel content creator Murumolu Watiketike has called out praise leaders who have cunningly added Bese Kote Shumule to their praise list during ministrations. She made a caution on her official Twitter handle. Recall that the song Teshumule was released in 2019 by a popular Nigerian rapper named Aziz Adishina Fashola, also known as Nera Mali. Meanwhile, shortly after the song was released, Nera Mali predicted that pastors would call him to perform the song in church because of its catchy chorus which depicts victory over Satan and challenges followers of Christ to lift their legs high and step on the devil. Not long after, many gospel praise leaders pulled the part of the song that dare sons and daughters of Jesus Christ to step on the devil to the pulpit, thereby turning it into a gospel song during praise sessions. In the tweet made by Morumolo Watiketike, she cautioned praise leaders to desist from using the song during praise sessions because it is not a praise song. In her words, Dear praise ministers, Shebi Omojesu Niefeshi Ko Teshumule is not a praise song. Epene Ekwori. Meanwhile, in reaction to her post, some of her followers agreed with her position, affirming that the song is really not a gospel song. Describing the trend as uncomfortable, Olua Femi Faith wrote, I actually find it so uncomfortable when such songs are sung around me because sincerely, it is not a gospel song. Talk more of being a praise song. Olua Nikemi also tweeted, Like seriously, the church has turned to clubhouse to some people. Choristers need to pray for Holy Spirit to sing through them because praise and worship is not about the beats and the dance. Kaya did recall the time he heard the song at a praise concert in Ilori, the capital of Kwara State. In his words, Heard this nonsense at one praise concert at Elorin. I just gently entered Moto and went to sleep. If I won't go club, it go better pass make the Kong Tong God house to club. Lady Jade Globo noted that TikTok trends are now being introduced during praise and worship sessions. In her words, I thought it was just me. I had a cringe moment when I was at a church and the singer said, So we have TikTokers in the house? The next thing, TikTok dance. It was off for me. Because who is the center of the worship or you want to show off new TikTok dance? Let's be discerning. On the other hand, Victoria Onimisi gave another example of a praise song used in churches which she also disagreed with. In her words, she wrote, No beside the Chris, now God had the praise Edge your brother. Whoever called you a madman before? Rubbish and trash. I was in other relationships, but God had his plans. Pastor Apology reveals. Pastor Adeola Emmanuel Apology, lead actor of Enoch Movie and husband to popular gospel skit maker Morumulu Watiketike, revealed that he was in other relationships before he met his wife. The young man of God made this known while speaking on Beyond Entertainment show with people. While narrating how he met his wife, he gave a brief background of his family, noting that he was born into a devoted RCCG home, being the only boy amongst three girls. According to him, his father was a pastor, and in RCCG, there is something called the Pastor Seeds family, which comprises of the workers, the children of the workers, and the children of the pastors of the church. And during the RCCG convention, congress, and special Holy Ghost services, the pastor seat family usually have their own meetings while the programs are ongoing at the main arena. He noted that it was during one of those meetings he met his wife because her father was also a pastor. According to him, they became longtime friends, but he was in other relationships at the time. In his words, he said, so in one of those meetings, because my wife's dad is a pastor in Ondo as well, she is a member of the pastor seed family. So we met at one of the meetings and we were friends for a long time. Though, I was in all sorts of relationships with other people, but God had his plans. And as God will have it, I liked her, she liked me, and here we are today happily married. 
Pastor Apology and Morumolu Watiketike got married in August 2022 and they are blessed with a son, Jubilee. Just as this box is filled with so much sweet, so is my heart filled with so much love for you. Wow! Yours, Shihun. So sweet. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Hello there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to God's Own TV. Okay, so are you ready to say some ow and God when? Because this is a beautiful news. As gospel film actor and cinematographer Toby Olumuiwa reportedly proposed to his fiancee, Olowo Kere Oluwashim, on a movie set, Toby Olumuiwa played the role of one of Pastor Adeboye's friends in Enoch the movie, and he proposed on the set of a movie, Mohuru movie. He proposed and it was so beautiful. Take a look at some of the pictures from the proposal and don't forget to share your best wishes and prayers to the new couple. Mikey warns parents about exposing children to cartoons. Joshua Mike Bamiloyi, son of evangelist Mike Bamiloyi, a film editor and music producer, has warned parents about effort to indoctrinate their children through cartoons while reacting to the new plan of a popular multinational mass media animation company, Walt Disney. According to a report, it was gathered that the co-chairman of the entertainment division of Disney made an announcement of its newest plan, which is to open a Disney-themed pediatric transgender clinic where children would be able to change their gender without any feeling of being stigmatized by the society. The co-chairman noted that the company initially made a move to introduce queer and more queer ideologies and sexualities to children and also encourage them to experiment on their own. Seeing how many tangible results the strategy had yielded after analyzing the engagement of their viewers with their content, he added that their next move is to create a Disney-themed pediatric transgender clinic for children. Meanwhile, in reaction to the announcement, Joshua Mike Bamiloui alerted his followers that the devil is not resting and he is working more than anyone could imagine through animation-making companies to pull more souls to himself, especially the young ones. He also added that the major intention of the animation companies is no longer profit-making, but to indoctrinate and brainwash the young ones, which is no longer done in the dark, but rather in the open and with pride. In his words, he wrote, Just know that the devil is working over time. It's clear Disney no longer cares about profit-making, it lays a focus on soul winning into darkness. Their indoctrination and children washing schemes aren't coded anymore. I hope you're out of the side bench. Quoting some replies posted by some people to tackle his initial post on the same subject matter, J. Mikey noted that things have gotten so bad in some foreign countries. In his words, Here's how bad things have gotten, especially amongst teenagers, especially in foreign countries. Observe some of their replies to my previous tweet about the dangers some of these cartoons are exposing youngsters to. You may call their replies mere sarcasm, but it's more than that. Hey, 
Hello there, God's own people. Welcome to God's own TV. Okay, so it is raining testimonies, powerful testimonies as Minister GUC dedicates his massive mansion. Can you see the white, elegant building over there? Yes, that belongs to Minister GUC and we are so happy for him. We are grateful for the mercies and the provisions of God over his life. His boss, Easy T Concept, could not hide his excitement as he took to his social media page to share beautiful pictures of his house and beautiful moments from the dedication of the new building. Very beautiful building. And he also shared testimonies of God's faithfulness in the life of Minister JUC. You know, flashing back to the times that he started and how he was discouraged from signing Minister GUC, but he followed the spirit, he followed his heart, and today it is paying off massively as Minister GUC is now a force to be reckoned with in the gospel scene, gospel music scene in Nigeria and Africa at large. Sharing the testimony, he said, so on the 4th of November 2019, the journey officially started with Minister GUC. It has been three years and eight months now and has been a very great journey. When I was convinced to sign him, a few folks came to me and made remarks on how he is a preacher and not a singer and he is not commercially viable for such investment, how he wasn't such a commercial songwriter and more. He continued that, however, I was very focused on my convictions about Minister GUC and today I can say it was one of my very best decisions as a music executive. He then went on to share some things that happened after Minister GUC relocated from Port Harcourt to Lagos. His apartment was not ready for a while and he was actually lodging, sleeping, living in the studio. But according to him, Minister GUC did not complain. He took everything well and he said he's such a patient man that he always wants others to win. He always wants others to succeed, even if it means pending his own project. How amazing is that? So we as Girls on TV, we are celebrating with Minister GUC. We pray for more wins and we pray for more hands, greater hands of God upon his life. Thank you so much for watching this video. Drop your own congratulatory messages and best wishes and even prayers in the comment section below till i come your way again don't forget that you are forever loved by the lord bye Tokwe alabi react to controversy over aboru aboye minister Tokwe alabi a popular nigerian gospel artist has reacted to the controversy generated by her song, Aboru Aboye. Recall that the gospel minister was attacked heavily on social media after a video of her song ministration on Aboru Aboye went viral. According to her attackers, the word Aboru Aboye is used by traditionalists and shouldn't be used in a gospel song. Contributing to the viral video, some traditionalists also insisted that the terms belong to Ifa worshippers sharing the origin of the word. Aboru aboyi kiki babala woni mm aboru aboyi kiki temun ki babala woni nti afi ma kini pe an fi gbori yin fun babala wo nitori awon omo ai awon ebi meanwhile minister alabi in her bid to clarify the controversy disagreed with her critics noting that the word aboru aboyi is pure yoruba and is not solely used by traditionalist furthermore she referred to the Bible to portray her point, which justified her intentions for using the word. In her words, she said, It was recorded that David made a sacrifice of faithfulness to God. Why was the word sacrifice not written as the same English word in the Yoruba version of the Bible? It is a Yoruba language. There is no special language for traditionalists. We are all speaking the Yoruba language. If some people say they want to use the language in their own style, it is not bad. We have also decided to use it 
in our own style. While reiterating that sacrifices were rendered in the Bible, she further queried, saying, Was Abraham... No, I sacrifice accepted or not was it not the same with isaac also she established her point with specific reference to romans 12 verse 1 which says brethren by the message of god that you present your bodies in living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service according to her the word acceptable is the aboru while living sacrifice is apoye Canada-based Nigerian gospel filmmaker Professor Doni Azan has announced the death of his immediate younger brother, Wasiu Adeniyi Azan. Doni Azan shared the outbreaking news via his official Instagram page alongside the picture of his late brother. According to the professor, Wasiu had many great plans he did not fulfill before his death. While surrendering to the will of God, he went on to pray that God will fill the vacuum he left behind. In his words, he said, Wasiu Adeni Hazan, my immediate younger brother, you had great plans, but we cannot question God for taking you. I pray that God will fill the vacuum you have created. Rest on, my grow up partner. Many took to the comment section to pay their condolence, while they also pray for the Professor Hazan and the family. Recall that Stoney Azan had earlier lost his wife of 10 years, Mrs. Bolanle, in December 2020 at the age of 57. Remembering her in 2021, the gospel had told revealed he did not believe he could survive the death of his wife as she left him suddenly. In his words, he said, I am surviving. My wife was everything to me. She was an encourager. My wife passed on unexpectedly because she was not sick. We had been married for almost 10 years before our demise. If one has a spouse that is supportive of one's vision and the person is very experienced in that field, it makes things a lot better. I am not talking about a wife that is submissive and supportive. I am talking about getting married to a foreigner in the field that one operates. Speaking further, he revealed that there were times he burst into laughter when he remembers his late wife. He said, When my wife died, I did not know I could survive it because I feel her presence all the time. When I think about her or remember the things she used to say, I begin to laugh alone. I had heard so many things about her before we got married, but when we tied a knot, I realized that she was even holier than what I saw on the peripheral level. We at Girls on TV are praying for the family of the departed that may the Lord comfort them and may the Lord grant them the fortitude to bear the loss. Reactions as Victoria Orenze gushes over surrogate Popular female gospel artist Victoria Orenze has caused a stir on social media while gushing over her surrogate. The music minister who is known for exceptional spirit-filled songs posted a picture of herself and her surrogate on her Twitter handle. The woman of God who clearly attended the wedding posted her picture alongside with her surrogate, noting that it raining godly marriage and also prayed for those believing God for their life partner. In her words, she wrote, Myself and my surrogate, my Eni, the mother of my children, Enesi, Oyiza and Omiza, at a marriage ceremony today. It is when in godly marriages, even Mondays are not exempted. May God bless all believing for a godly union in Jesus' name. Meanwhile, reactions began to trail due to the word surrogate which was used by Minister Victoria to describe her friend. Linda Esther, who was in shock, wrote, Children through surrogacy? Hmm. This woman of God unravels herself every time, one piece at a time. Nanquat, on the other hand, wanted the gospel minister to share her surrogacy story to edify godly women. She wrote, 
I don't know if the word surrogate is used loosely here, but if it is literally used, I would encourage that you consider hosting a space or something like that to share your surrogacy story. Many godly ladies on a similar journey can be edified, encouraged, and guided by your story. Noble Ogenetega, who was finding it difficult to understand the tweet, wrote, I don't actually understand this tweet, but I'll pass and hope it's not what I read. However, after Minister Victoria saw the reactions and how her words were misunderstood, she tweeted yesterday, explaining that the lady she called her surrogate was not an actual surrogate to her. According to her, she sees her children as her own. In her words, she wrote, I see her children like my own, like she carried them and gave birth to them for me. That's why she's my surrogate. In reaction to her explanation, Michael M. C. Silas, who almost had a heart attack because of her initial post, wrote, Be careful what you say and how you say them in this time and era where strange things are happening. You almost gave me a heart shocker now.